Well, hello there. Brandon Walker, more Cowbell, Mississippi State Podcast, SEC Country. We are coming to you from the SEC Country Studios on this beautiful Thursday. I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's okay where we are. A little hot. Getting a little hot. Had a couple of weeks of nice spring weather after a cold April. But, uh, yeah, getting hot. We're going to talk recruiting today on the show. We're going to talk about football recruiting specifically as Mississippi State looks to put together their first full class under the new coaching staff, Joe Moorhead, Charles Huff, and the rest of them. They have done pretty well out of state so far. Let's focus in-state for this uh, this show. We'll talk about the 2019 class of recruits. We'll talk about the Derek Halls and the Zach Edwards and the Jaron Handys and the Charles Moores of the world. We'll talk about all those guys with Steve Robertson of 247sports.com, who will be right along directly. We'll talk about recruiting with him. And maybe I'll ask about a couple of other things, but like his his Twitter beefs lately. I don't know. We'll we'll discuss some things. We'll also talk about Dak Prescott. Time to make some money for Dak. He's going to get paid very soon. We'll discuss Dak Prescott and his situation with the Dallas Cowboys. And then we'll have Thursday Throwback Trivia. Thursday Throwback Trivia is back. Six questions, Mississippi State University sports related. I ask them. You answer them, you'll probably get them wrong, but hey, that's okay. That's okay. Hello to Mark Childs in Ringgold, Georgia. Hello to D. Curtis in Little Rock, Arkansas. Blake Boswell's in Meridian, where it's got a high of 96 degrees on Monday and Tuesday. That sounds miserable. Kenny Manning from the swing in his backyard. Good morning from Sullivan, Alabama, says Lynn Rhodes Gilmer. Thank you for being here, Lynn Rhodes Gilmer. Keon DeWan Nettles checking in from Alabama. Thank you, Keon. No YouTube feed, says Steve C. What's what's up with the YouTube feed there, Landshark? You say it's good. It's good. Well, Steve, check again. Hale State and Tupelo, Stephen Turner. Isaac Sparks from Panama City Beach, Florida. Bulldog this morning. Well, I assume he's a bulldog every morning, actually. Toby Denton in downtown Meridian. Cliff Axtell in Madison, Mississippi. And Wayman Hodge checking in from Aberdeen. Darnell Watts Juzang from Gulfport. Good to have you from the coast. Hey, hey, BW, Hale State and Go Dogs, Jessica Elm Bosley in West Virginia. Jay Heath Hopkins in uh, Hernando, Mississippi. Dak is selling shirts for cancer charities. Go check his social media sites and buy one, says Daniel Martin. I really should. I, it, it's going to be hard because I don't buy shirts anymore. Holler at your maroon and company. But um, yeah, that's a good idea. Go check his uh, go check his uh, social media, and you could buy one of those shirts. So we're going to talk to Steve Robertson about recruiting today. We'll get him right up in the top of the show as soon as we start the podcast. We'll have him. We'll discuss uh, everything going on in the world of recruiting, and we'll you know we'll get to uh, we'll get to other stuff. We'll talk about Dak Prescott and his money. We'll talk about well Thursday throwback trivia. Like I said, that's. Uh, Always exciting to talk about. Always exciting to have as uh, I give you some questions from way back in the day. I don't know about today's. I don't know if they're difficult or if they're easy. My feed has just stopped on Facebook, by the way. Are we still going out? We are. Okay. I'm not getting comments, and I'm not getting we're – not on, we're not on the podcast yet. Maybe hit a refresh. I hit refresh. I, I've got nothing. I don't want your computer. I want my computer to work. So you're telling me what I'm saying right now is going out to the people? Hi, people. So let's let's get my computer to refresh here. We're uh, this second day in a row, Landshark. Second day in a row. It's two days in a row. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. <sighs> so yeah, Steve Robinson will be here along uh, right at the top of the hour. I'm trying to to stall for time so that we can get Steve Robinson on the phone at the top of the hour. I told him we'd be calling at eleven. And Steve's had himself a row lately. He's had himself a little fracas there on the Twitter with some Ole Miss guys who for three and four years have told him, told everybody that he had no idea what he was talking about and he was a liar and he had an agenda. And the whole time he was the only one telling the truth. So, you know, it's funny how that goes. We'll, uh, we'll talk to Steve. We'll definitely dive into recruiting. I'm anxious to hear what he has to say. There we go. Martin Smith says BW is going to have to go back to the pink phone. That's not true at all. Point City, Point City, two in a row, Junior Ray and Drew Kissman. Good to have you guys. Working on my end, says Lance Chain. Good good to hear it. Good to hear it. 
So yeah, um, I got everybody here. I got 137 people here. Don't use that pink Ole Miss phone again today. Ole Miss phones equals NCAA sanctions. Was that a burner phone or was that one that no, it was good? Okay. I love that Dak isn't a snooty NFL player. He actually gives back. Said somebody. Sorry, I missed it. Why does your show start in the middle of the showcase showdown, says Ethan Flurry. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, but you can always mute the showcase showdown, right? I understand. You know, it takes me back when I would get when when I was younger, way younger, and I would go to my grandfather's house or grandmother's house in the morning, and they would always watch uh, Price Is Right followed by Young and the Restless, followed by Midday on WCBI. That's that's what it would happen. That's how it would happen. Why are you laughing so hard, Turf? Don't worry about it. Okay. Sherry Murphy, Alexandria, Louisiana. Grady, Leon, Bruce, Jackson, Mississippi. Anthony Covington, I-20 east of Vicksburg. Barry Morgan, uh, Barry Moore, sorry, Barry Moore in Asheville says that he got his first, uh, he got his first cowbell in 1965. That's impressive. That's impressive. Do you still have it? That's the more important question. I, this is my first cowbell I ever got in my life, and I got it in 1991, and I still have it. So do you still have yours? Dominique D. Mill Middleton. Hale State from Batesville, Mississippi, home of South Panola High School, second best high school football program in the state. Good for them. All right. Sir, you ready? We're going to go ahead and get fired up. We'll have uh, Steve Robertson, then we'll have Dak Prescott talk, and then we'll have Thursday throwback trivia, and that'll be the show for today. I'm very excited about it. Good content. Go, Terp. The More Cowbell Show, brought to you by SEC Country. And now, your host of The More Cowbell Show, Brandon Walker. That's me, Brandon Walker. Thanks to Jay Langston, fan of the show, for the great introduction. He uh, he emailed me last week. I forgot to email him back. But uh, Jay, with the best introduction in all the podcast world, I dare you to find any Team Center podcast with a better intro than that right there. Hail State on the electric guitar. Fabulous stuff. Yeah, go ahead and call Steve Robertson. My name is Brandon Walker. This is More Cabell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. It is a Thursday, which means we're going to talk to our old pal Steve Robertson of 24-7 Sports to talk recruiting. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitter, if you're watching on Facebook, please uh, submit a question right now. I probably won't read it, but hey, I might. I have a bunch of questions myself. We're going to talk to Steve about recruiting and about Mississippi State, about Joe Moorhead and his staff going out and finding players. So we'll get to that shortly as soon as we get Steve on the phone. We'll also talk about Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott in line to get paid. He's the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Not really getting what he's worth right now, but that is coming at the end of this year. Very exciting stuff for Dak Prescott. At the end of the show, we'll talk Thursday throwback trivia. Very quick before I get to everything else, if you can see me on Facebook right now or YouTube or Twitter, you can see this beautiful Mississippi State baseball polo I'm wearing. Fantastic stuff. Mother's Day coming up. Check out maroonandcompany.com, maroonandco.com, excuse me, at maroonandco on Twitter, at maroonandco Instagram. They're on Highway 12 in Starkville. You can get her a cowbell. You can get her a nice shirt. Not this one because it's way too big for the average size woman. But still, check out the great Mississippi State variety of stuff they have there at Maroon & Company. Now, Mississippi State recruiting. We're heading into the summer, and there's not all that much going on in the world of college football in the summer, except that's when players are really making their decisions. That's when they're really going to camps. That's when a lot of the recruiting work is done. And for that reason, we turn to our good friend, our pal, did I not ring the bell? I forgot to ring the bell, didn't I? Are they talking about it on Facebook Live? Gosh. That is how we're going to ring in Steve Robertson. Steve, how are you doing, buddy? I'm tremendous this morning, Brandon. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. I want you to know this is a safe space. You can be comfortable here. I'm not going to call you a buffoon. I'm not going to say all these things about you. So this is a safe space for you, Steve, okay? Well, it's, it's so glad to be among friends, but uh, but I'm not a delicate flower, and so I understand that words are just words, and that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. So, 
Let's go ahead and dive right into recruiting talk. Um, things are really starting to become clear on the in-state clash. You know, the out-of-state recruiting, state's done very well so far, but now you got to really dive into that this in-state class and figure out who's going where. We're going to zero in on some targets today, but we seem to be getting some big-name official visitors every weekend at Mississippi State. Last week, I think it was Zach Edwards and Jaron Handy. Is that a good sign going forward that the, the state continues to get pretty much everybody on the campus for unofficial visits? Well, it is, and it really shows they're working at things, and uh, it's not you're know, just working towards one big event. There is a consistent effort throughout the process to get guys on campus, and that's really something we haven't seen a lot of uh, in the past decade or so, and that's not to throw shade at Dan Mullen and, and their group. They did a good job at recruiting. Not a great job, but a good job. But what we're seeing from Joe Moorhead it's a very consistent effort to get kids on campus every single week. And I believe you're going to start seeing the dividends from those efforts when they pay off here in the coming weeks because a lot of these guys, it was their first visit to Mississippi State or it's the first time they've been able to sit down and speak with the coaching staff face-to-face. And the responses that Paul and I have been able to get when we spoke to these players have been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, so I want to just go target by target. I want to dive into this in-state class uh, maybe on an individual basis. I want to talk about a couple of linebackers first. You know, Derek Hall is a guy from the coast, a big-time linebacker, maybe even a defensive end prospect, but he is a big-time guy. And I'm not sure three months ago state fans really thought they were in it, whereas now it seems like there might be a little momentum there. Am I, am I reading too much into that, or, or could state be in the Derek Hall sweepstakes here? Well, I, I felt from the very beginning the state was a team to beat for Derek Hall. There was a lot of discussion that Georgia was kind of a – a lifelong favorite of his, a school that he was very interested in, but uh, they haven't shown a lot of interest so far. But there's a lot of Mississippi State connections with him. Derek is a guy that has his own cowbell. And uh, so you know, that, that certainly uh, helps the feelings of the Bulldog fans when you think about those possibilities. But one of the reasons that I think some people really felt like that uh, he was a little more receptive to Ole Miss and, and others is because of the fact, number one, Derek is an unbelievably nice young man. And so he's very engaging, very articulate. And so he, when you walk away from the conversation, you think, well, you know, I feel really good about what he had to say. And he's had those same conversations with pretty much every reporter about every school. And so I think because of that, and, and no fault of his own, there's some people I think that have kind of gotten a false impression just because of the fact he doesn't want to disappoint anybody. So he says a lot of things that people kind of take out, out of context. But – He's a guy that's very, very serious about majoring in engineering, and of course, Mississippi State, one of the best engineering programs in the South. Uh, so Auburn, Mississippi State, the current favorites, but I wouldn't count on Miss out completely. That there's some personal relationships there on, the, on his mother's side that will certainly keep the Rebels in it, and I, I would expect them to get an official visit. But I think ultimately, Mississippi State's going to sign their call. All right, good to hear. What about Nakobe Dean, five star? I mean, he's universally. I hope your dog is okay. <laughs> He is universally kind of considered the top player in the state this year, and it's a loaded state. Is there a leader for N'Kobe Dean yet, the linebacker out of uh, DeSoto County? Well, there's a lot of discussion in the beginning that LSU had really made a lot of a positive momentum with him. But uh, I think the distance from home may prove to be a factor it's too much for them to overcome. Alabama seems to be the favorite as of today. Now, he is not that big beefy, quintessential Alabama linebacker. He's a guy that flies around like a heat stick to Mitchell, but he goes, he's right at six foot tall. He's not that, you know, he's not C.J. Mosley or any of those guys, but he's a very productive linebacker, and I think Alabama's likely the team to beat, but he's not a guy that I think will go exceptionally far from home. I know there's a lot of schools that are trying to get him in for visits, and Mississippi State will have him on campus later this month uh, you know, for an unofficial visit, but I don't see... State is a major player today with him. I think they may get an official visit, but I believe State's probably in the second grouping. All right, let's go with a couple of guys here. Zach Edwards is from Starkville High School. He is committed to LSU. Jerry and Jones is from Northwest Rankin High School. He's a safety. He is committed to Oklahoma. Is the door still open for Mississippi State on both of those guys? I, I certainly think so. I think Zach Edwards and his mom came and had an unofficial visit you know, recently with State, and uh, his dad very involved in the process, and it's one of those things, because he is a Starville High School kid, he's a guy that's come from a Mississippi State family, you almost have to take him on principle. Now, adding the fact, too, what a good player he is, it makes sense that Mississippi State would target him, make him feel like a priority. And I believe that's what you're kind of seeing happen now. A lot of people, I think, kind of maybe took a step back once he committed to LSU. But ultimately, I believe Mississippi State keeps him at home. He's very close with Kobe Jones and Willie Gay. is the guy he's always looked up to. And so I feel like State will be a fact with him until the end. 
Jerry and Jones is the guy that was set to commit to Mississippi State, takes an official visit to Oklahoma, kind of gets caught in the moment, makes a decision to go there. He is a tremendous safety prospect. I mean, he's a guy that can play wide receiver or safety on the next level, but I think that he's a guy that's got NFL potential at safety. And he's been on campus again by his own decision. It wasn't one of those things where State was trying to work him in and say, hey, come see us. He wanted to come since he didn't get to go to the spring game, so he worked out with his staff to come in and have an unofficial visit the weekend after the spring game. So the fact that these players are spending time on our campus when they could certainly be elsewhere, I think says a lot about their interest in Mississippi State. I got three more questions, and I thank you for being here. We're talking to Steve Robertson, the recruiting expert for 247sports.com, covers Mississippi State. You know who Steve Robertson is. And I'm Brandon Walker, the host of this show. Don't forget that. Now, I want to look at this. You got Nathan Pickering, you got Charles Moore, you got Jaron Handy, you got on and on and on outstanding defensive linemen in this class. Probably, I would just assume, one of the best defensive line classes in the history of this state. Is it possible that Mississippi State and Ole Miss both come out of the 2019 classes with their defensive lines of the future? Well, yeah, I think so, but I don't know that Ole Miss will be made primarily with Mississippi yet. Uh, I think Ole Miss has a real good chance with Jaron Handy. As a matter of fact, I crystal ball Handy to Ole Miss a while back, but shortly after he decommitted from LSU. I think he's the one guy State hadn't been able to get a lot of traction with. Now, you get him on campus last weekend, and he says his eyes were kind of open a little bit after coming up here and spending some time with his staff. So I wouldn't count State completely out of it, but I think it does eventually become a number of games. Uh, you've got Charles Moore. You've got Nathan Pickler, as you mentioned. And I believe State's going to sign you pretty much a complete defensive line of, of in-state kids. Nathan Pickering's a guy that he talked about committing to Mississippi State last year. Uh, but now he's blown up. His offer, offer sheet is to die for. And he's going to prolong the process. Might announce it in an all-star game. Might announce it on signing day. But I think because of his connections and relationships in Mississippi State, State will ultimately get him. But it's going to be tough. it's going to be a roller coaster. And fans are going to have to be prepared for that. He's going to play a lot of things, do a lot of interviews because he does enjoy the process. He's going to take a lot of visits. But I think in the end, State's relationships with him, with players and coaches, is going to be difficult for other teams to overcome. Two more questions, Steve. I thank you for your time. Which running back do you feel best at? we got a couple four-star running backs on the board. I think of John Emery. I think of uh, the kid from Memphis whose name escapes me at this point. Uh, which running back do you think Mississippi State has the best chance to land? Well, Eric Gray is the guy you're Thank referencing you. at Law Fan Collegiate School, and I, I like him a lot. I think he fits what we want to do at running back. Now, he's not the big Saquon Barkley type guy. You know, he's a guy that's very explosive, though. And the first time that I sat down and talked to Charles Huff, I asked him, what are you looking for? And before I could even finish the question, he said speed. And then every time I would try to finish the question, he would say speed. He wants game-breaking bats. He wants guys that once they break a tackle, there's a possibility it's going to be a touchdown every single time. And that's who Eric Gray is. Eric Gray is one of those guys, if he gets in space and slips a tackle, it's a chunk play every single time, even on the college level, because he's one of these quick twitch guys that he can make people miss. And then he has the, the, the home run speed to kind of get in the secondary and outrun the safety. Uh, I, I like Ronald Tompkins, too, but he's a guy that's kind of working his way back uh, from a knee injury. We expect him to make a full recovery. But he's a guy, too, I think you take your time with, because it may end up being a one running back class. Now, Jerry and Ely is a guy that sort of was stayed a little bit, and there's still a lot of discussion behind the scenes that he is going to open his recruitment back up. And despite being committed to Ole Miss, he's recently released you know a list of 11 schools that he's still focusing on. Mississippi State's one of those. I certainly think State would take him, but I don't think you can take him as your one running back because I think the possibility of him going on to play professional baseball is a very real possibility because there are many cross-checkers that have him with the first-round grade, uh, and he's certainly – worthy of that acclaim, but I don't think from a football standpoint you can say, you know what, we'll go take him and then hope for the best, and then if he decides to go play pro baseball completely, then you're out of running back. So I think to fit Mississippi State's needs, you got to go out and get a guy like Eric Gray, and then if Ely wants to come, you take him to kind of the insurance policy. But I think Eric Gray fits exactly what Mississippi State wants at running back. Last question, wide receiver. you got Knox Beast, Kazea Pruitt. you got Dennis Jackson uh, from, I don't know where he's from, South Mississippi. You got those guys in the state of Mississippi. Not a whole lot of wide receiver in the state, but uh, what does wide receiver look like as far as recruiting for Mississippi State goes in 2019? Yeah, I really got a sense that Luke Getzey wanted to get through spring practice and kind of see what hand he had been dealt at wide receiver before they went full bore after some guys. You know, Quentin Gorber's a guy that committed to Mississippi State early, four-star receiver by the best for hand Louisiana. And then Keziah Pro is the guy we've talked about for a year. He's a guy that's from Macon, goes to Knoxville County, big, big fan and friend of Jeff Simmons. Thought he would be a pretty 
early commitment from Mississippi State, that hadn't happened. I think he's one of these guys that also kind of feels like that he's got the juice to wait out the process. I don't know that that's true. Uh, I like him a lot, but I don't think that he's a guy that can afford to wait until December to make his declaration if he wants to go to Mississippi State. Now, Jordan Jernigan's a guy from Tupelo who's committed to Ole Miss. A little raw in his development, and that's not his fault. He, he's a great straight-line runner. He's a guy that I've had in camp before, and he's run four fours for me on multiple occasions. Not a great route runner because of the offense they run, but he has the potential to be a very good player. Now, he's not an A.J. Brown type guy. He's more of a speed guy. He's a guy that once he gets in space and you run a slant with him and if he ever gets inside leverage, it's going to be a foot race between he and the safety for the touchdown. And so I, I like him a lot. And then Dennis Jackson is the guy you mentioned from Summerall, Mississippi. Thank you. Uh, don't get a lot of products out of it. Jordan Thomas is a, a product of the Summerall High School program as well. Uh, but Dennis is a guy that State hasn't had a lot of success with and been able to get him on campus he's well, i think he's probably the only blue chip guy in the state that has not been to mississippi state uh this year uh but i think that he's another one of those guys that could be an lsu guy i think Ole miss has had some success with him uh, but i think ultimately state's going to end up signing three wide receivers in this class maybe four if you can get a game breaker but i think most of those need to be met out of state unless you can get jornigan and, and, and jornigan and pruitt in, in the both of summer well, that is just fantastic information, Steve. I really appreciate it. You can hear Steve on his own show uh, on the Boneyard on Bulldog Sports Radio. I think you're Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm not sure. Um, but you, correct. You can also pick up the book. Uh, he's working on a second book. Steve's always got a lot going on, which means his time is valuable. Steve, thank you for being on my show. Thanks for having me, Brandon. All right. That was Steve Robertson. Fantastic stuff. Boy, we really dove headfirst into recruiting there. That was good. I enjoyed that. Jack Prescott. Got recruited to Mississippi State in 2011. Remember the 2011 class where we all thought Dan Mullen couldn't recruit at all and we, we threw ourselves off a building and all we got out of that class was Dak Prescott and Josh Robinson and Preston Smith and Darius Slay. Yeah, that class. But Dak Prescott is the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. He is currently the biggest bargain in all of sports. Dak Prescott makes 630000 That's what he'll make this year. 630000 Just a couple thousand more than what I make for SEC country. But he is the biggest bargain in sports. He is 66th among quarterbacks in the league. 65 quarterbacks are making more money right now than Dak Prescott. However, the worm is starting to turn. In, in the NFL, when you're fourth-round pick, you got three years on your rookie deal. At the end of your third year, you get to renegotiate. You get a new contract. And Dak Prescott, this time next year, will be one of the highest-paid players in the NFL. Jimmy Garoppolo, who just uh, has seven starts in his career, that's about 15 less than Dak has, Jimmy Garoppolo just got five years, $135 million from the San Francisco 49ers. Dak's going to get more than that. He'll get less than Matt Ryan just got. He'll get less than Aaron Rodgers. But Dak Prescott, if you listen to Jerry Jones, who recently told somebody that Dak is about to get an extraordinary deal, Stephen Jones, the, uh, the Cowboys VP, said that Dak is going to get paid big time. He's going to go out and win the MVP this year. Then he's going to get his money. But this is exciting stuff. You know, we all like Dak Prescott. We all like having an NFL quarterback from Mississippi State. And his days of being underpaid are numbered. He will be a big-time guy in the NFL for a long time, and that's very exciting. You know, he makes he makes 630000 on the field. He makes five times as much off the field as he does on it. That's how marketable he is. He makes five times as much as he does off the field as he does on it. That's That's incredible. Thursday throwback trivia. It's a little thing we started a couple of weeks ago where I ask you guys on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, I ask you five, six throwback questions and see if you know the answer. I'm trying to educate you about Mississippi State. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Some people on here are exceptionally quick with Google, but we are, we are state fans. We have integrity, all right? We don't use burner phones. We don't go to Google for trivia contests, do we? Look me in the eyes, do we? No, we don't. Number one, in its entire history, Mississippi State football has two teams that it has played multiple times in bowl games. It has two teams it's played multiple times in bowl games. Who are those teams? In its entire bowl history, it's played two teams twice, or two teams multiple times. Who are those two teams? Da -na 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 -na. We do need some trivia music, by the way. I know Terp and Landshark, you're talking to each other right now. You're not listening to me. We need trivia music so I don't just have to sit out here and sing or something. NC State, 
That's one of them. Clemson? No, that's not. NC State says Scott H. Chill. Brian Haydack, get out of here. I do not want you ruining my trivia today. Get out. I'm blocked. Hey, Terp, ban Brian Haydad. I'm serious. Ba here, I'll ban him. You don't have to. I'll ban him. Where'd he go? But, but, no, I'm serious. I want you to ban Brian Haydad from this chat. I do not want him here. The answer is North Carolina and NC State. Isaac, uh, somebody said it. Steve Hill got it. I'm not continuing until Brian Haydad is banned from this chat. <clears throat> Number two. In 1998, Mississippi State played Tennessee in the, in the SEC championship game. Mississippi State scored two touchdowns, lost 24 to 14. Which two players scored the two touchdowns? Why is Brian Haydad still here? There he is. He just said still here. Ban him right there. Here, I'll ban him. Uh, mm -hmm. Ha! He's gone. All right. Okay. All right. Which two uh, players scored the touchdowns? Robert Bean and Kevin Prentice. Scott Carr is correct. Scott Carr is correct. That is terrific. Number three. Number three. Which Mississippi State baseball player has the all-time career record for grand slams? Which Mississippi State baseball player has the all-time career record for grand slams? At Mississippi State. Five grand slams. That's how many this guy hit. He had five grand slams. Mississippi State. Baseball history. Who has the career record for home runs? Moreland? No, that's not correct. Like Elkin. That is not right. Oh, the answer earlier was uh, Kevin Prentice and Robert Bean. Robert Bean on a 70-yard interception return. Kevin Prentice on the punt return. Will Clark? No. Clark? No. Clark? No. Palmero? No. Palmero? No. Weiss? No. Rooker? No. Burke Masters, no. Wes Ray, no. Bobby Thickpin, no. Ryan Sparks, Mr. Google himself. Ryan Sparks with the correct answer. Bruce Castoria. In the early 80s, Bruce Castoria had five Grand Slams, including four Grand Slams in one season, which is also a Mississippi State record. Number four. Who holds the all-time career record for runs batted in for a career at Mississippi State? Who holds the all-time career record for runs batted in at Mississippi State? This gentleman knocked in 195 runs in his career. 195 runs. 195 RBIs for this guy. Palmero, no. Clark, no. Renfro, also no. It's it's kind of obscure. It's kind of obscure. Palmero. No. No, not Palmero. Palmero and Clark are always the answers you guys guess, but if it were Palmero and Clark, I wouldn't ask the question. It's not Palmero, it's not Clark, it's not Renfro. It's not Shorty McBean, whoever that is. Scott Carr has looked it up. Scott Carr with the first correct answer. Between 1995 and 1998, Richard Lee had 195 RBIs. Richard Lee is the all-time RBI champion at Mississippi State. Number five. Number five. Cinco. In 1996, Mississippi State men's basketball defeated number one Kentucky in New Orleans for the SEC tournament championship. What was the score of the game? What was the score of the game? The score of the game, 1996, Mississippi State beats Kentucky to win the SEC championship. SEC tournament championship, that is. 87-81, that is not correct, David Lay. Thank you for the guess. 83-71, not, not quite, Scott Carr. 83-74, close. Close, Ryan Sparks. 84-75, no. 68-65, no. State scored more. Wayman Hodge, that is correct. 83-71, no. 76-68, no. 83-79, no. Finally, I got one past Ryan Sparks. 199, Amy Hall just wanted her name on to be read out loud. Daniel Martin says 144 to 40. That's not quite right either. 55-20, Marty Morgan, beautiful score. Toby Denton. 
Toby Denton with the quickest Google today. Mississippi State scored 84. Kentucky scored 73. 84-73. Ryan Sparks, you were close. You had 83-74. You were just you, you, you juxtaposed it a little bit. And number six, last question for today. In what year did Mississippi State sports teams officially, officially become the Bulldogs? In what year did the Bulldogs officially become Mississippi State's team names? Toby Denton says, what is Google? You should Google it. Uh, ha, 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 jokes. 1962? No. 1960? Also no. 43? No. 42? No. 36? No. 64? No. 39? No. 34? No. 44? No. I feel like an auctioneer at this point. I'm just going to read it when it comes up. Nobody's gotten it yet. Nobody's gotten it yet. 58? No. Amy Hall? I'll just shout out Amy Hall. 1878? No. 1972? No. Come on. Blake Elkin. Blake Elkin just beat somebody else. He just beat Scott Carr, but Blake Elkin with the first correct answer. 1961. 1961 is when Mississippi State officially became the Bulldogs. They had unofficially been the Bulldogs for a while, but in 1961, somebody wrote it down on a piece of paper and filed it with whoever you file those things with, and it became our official team mascot. 1961. Now, that was fun. Give me a thumbs up for the trivia. I really enjoyed that I was able to ban Brian Haydad today. That was a highlight of my day. I talked to Steve Robertson, another highlight of my day. What a day. What a day. What a week here on More Cowbell. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for participating. Facebook Live, here I come. I'm going to talk to you. But on Facebook, but on the podcast, let me drop you off here. My name is Brandon Walker. You've been listening to More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. Well, that was fun, banning Brian Haydad like that. He just ruins the trivia. Just ruined it. That's all he did. I know he knows the answers. I know. He cheats a little bit, but he knows. What would you guys like to talk about? We got about five minutes today, five to seven minutes before I got to get out of here. I got to go take somebody to lunch. So uh, Amanda williams Yar says, I'm terrible at trivia. Well, this is educational, Amanda. So this is able to teach you about things that you didn't know and that I didn't know. I had to look all this stuff up, not like I knew it. I knew the Kentucky score. I would have known I would have known three out of the six questions today. I did not know the other three. If you unblock me on Twitter, I will be good, I promise. If you have ever been blocked by me on Twitter, you have gone above and beyond. You have gone over the line. So if I blocked you on Twitter, you have earned that block. Because I am a jerk. So... I allow people to be a jerk to me. And real Howard News, I've got nothing for you, Bill Anderson. Got nothing for you. I have not seen it. When will there be another shot of Jack? We had it yesterday, Samantha. Kong? Kong? Maybe the G is silent. Kong? Kang? Kang. I'm going to go with Kang. I want to pronounce it right. I want to say Kang. Um, Ariel Howard News? No, I don't have any Ariel Howard News. She doesn't live in my basement, okay? I don't have it. I don't have it, but uh, we had a shot of Jack yesterday. We'll probably do it once a week, Samantha. Samantha, you said yesterday on this uh, chat, and I looked at it afterwards. I always go back and look at it. I watch my film to see how I can improve. Uh, Samantha, you said your entire family is from West Point, Point City, so good good for you. Point City, yep, that's where I'm from. Hashtag free Brian. You think there's been a jail constructed that can hold him? Like King Kong. Okay, very good. Samantha Kong. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, uh, that Samantha. Cesar update. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I am going to visit him either tonight. Well, I got to go to my kid's ball game tonight. But uh, uh, Cesar is close to coming back to work. I think within a month or two, he'll be back at work. So he's, he's got, come a long way. If we make a regional, does Henderson get the job? No, Mark Wilson, he does not. There is no world. There's no universe that sees Gary Henderson become the full-time Mississippi State head baseball coach. We could win the College World Series. Gary Henderson is not becoming Mississippi State's full-time baseball coach. What do you think about black uniforms? I don't – I assume you're saying you don't like them. I, I like them just fine. I like the black uniforms. I like the gray uniforms. I like the white uniforms. 
They could be they could be pink and camouflage, and if they've got Mississippi State on the front, I like them. How many times have you given up on the baseball team during the game this year? I went to bed last night, and right when Mississippi State gave up the lead, I had a little headache last night. I went to bed early. I went to bed at like 10 Eastern. Um, a very, very – I never do that, but I went to bed very early last night. Got, got a lot of rest. But uh, I had given up. I had given up on uh, – on the game last night. I thought they had lost it. I thought they had lost a four, a three run ninth inning lead, but apparently they wanted extra innings. Good for them. Who's the next recruiting coordinator? Hopefully it's Chad Bumpus, Daniel Martin. That's who I'd like to see get that job. You've never mentioned Tim Lizzie on the food topics. Why says Roger Glover. I'm not a big, not a big, I'm not a huge fan. It's okay. It's good. It's all right. But you know, it wouldn't make my top three in West Point. Don't act crazy at your kid's game. I promise nothing. I promise nothing. Why did the recruiting coordinator leave? He got an opportunity to go to the Minnesota Vikings. So I'd leave too. The Minnesota Vikings call after the show. I'm going to holler at y'all. I will holler. We'll, we'll, we'll talk later. I was at Hoover. What an ending, says Steve C. I bet it was a great ending. I bet. I didn't find out State won until about five minutes before this show. Bumpus is happy in Utah, right? Yeah, he is, Blake Boswell. He is in a good spot. Bumpus is in a real good spot. Uh, and, but he's going to be a coach, a college coach for the next 30 to 40 years. He's going to be in demand, too. Um, but even though he's in a good spot, everybody loves to go home, right? Everybody loves to go home. Everybody loves to wear, if you're a state person, you want to wear this on your chest. If you're if you're from Mississippi and you're a state person from Mississippi, you want to represent Mississippi State. Now I don't know. I don't know if they've talked to him. I don't know if he's talked to them. But if I'm picking, I would say Chad Muffis. Is the bakery still in West Point, Marty Morgan? No, the bakery is closed right now. I believe it's opening in a new building, the old Wendy's building, which is right off Highway 45. I'm not sure it's open yet though. Hope McD- Hope Dan McDonald is the next baseball coach. I think everybody hopes that. I would say Dan McDonald is the name that most people want. The the name that most people want. Now, if you got Schlossnagel from uh, TCU, I think that's where he's at. If you got him, you couldn't be dissatisfied with that, could you? I mean, if you got a big time guy, if you got Tim Corbin, I saw I, I saw on Six Pack where people were saying, "I want McDonald, I want Schlossnagel, I really don't want Corbin." You don't want a guy who, who who has turned Vanderbilt into a national championship contender. You don't want a guy who won a national title at Vanderbilt. Come home. Any of those three would be incredible. What did Steve say about the running backs in the 2019 class for state, says Isaac Sparks? Well, Isaac, uh, you can go back and listen. No, I'm not going to be that guy. He said that Eric Gray probably is the guy he talked about the most, the guy from Memphis, a uh, very big speed guy, and that's what they want. They want speed, and, and it sounded like Eric Gray is the guy that state might have the best chance to land. He's a four-star out of Memphis. Am I the only person who is ready to play Alabama, as crazy as that sounds, Jeremiah Body? I'm ready to play all of them. I'm ready to play all of them. I'm ready for football. Will Fowler win the players? Yeah, he might. John Bart Heath, Ricky Fowler, certainly certainly a good golfer. It's time for him to win a major, though, right? It's time for him to win a major. Yes. I think he'll win one this year. Yes. I think he'll either win the, the U.S. Open or the PGA or something. Yeah. He could if, if, if Patrick Reed hadn't gone crazy, he would have won the Masters. Uh-huh. Hey, remember before the Masters – and you said, who's going to win? And I said, Patrick Reed. I do. That was awesome, wasn't it? It's impressive. Yeah. Joe Girardi for next baseball coach? Uh, n- probably not. Probably not. Landshark, how you doing? You ready to uh, do do this number right here? And there it goes. There it goes. Um, yeah, I got to take somebody to lunch. Where should I go to lunch? Tim Lizzie? The, the, one, in, the one in Atlanta, not the one in West Point, Mississippi? See, so you, you got the confused right there. there. You thought I was talking about this one. But there's also a restaurant in my hometown called Tin Lizzie, and they couldn't be more different. Isn't that Tin Lizzie's? Is that Tin Lizzie's? I think so. Yeah. The one in West Point is the Tin Lizzie. Singular. Yeah. Singular. Nice. So, yeah. And I don't think – I've never – we never talked about this, but Tin Lizzie's, right? Mm-hmm. They sell tacos and Mexican food. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like a taco or Mexican food rest, uh, restaurant name. I don't know. What does it sound like? Tin Lizzie's? Lizards? Oh, God. Remember when you said Justify wouldn't win the Derby? No, I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. There's no proof I said that. Dan McDonald makes a million per year. What could we pay? Probably more than a million a year. If we're serious, probably more than a million a year. 
How many wins do we need to make regionals? I have no idea. Just don't get swept in the last two weekends, I think, is the best. If you go one and two against Kentucky, one and two against Florida, I think you're in. I, th- I thought you needed three before the Troy game. They got the Troy game, so good spot. All right, Landshark, let's, let's do this thing. My name is Brandon Walker. Thanks for being here. Thanks for participating. Thanks for making this show the best Mississippi State podcast in the world. Until next time, my name is Brandon Walker. I just said that. You've been watching more Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country.